Hello and welcome back to the last episode of Phoenix Point uh, Blind Playthrough Legendary. My name is Saiken and today we're hopefully finishing this game. It has been a long time and although it has its ups and downs, I am very much looking forward to go on to the last mission. It's now or never. It's now. Or indeed never that we're going to fight uh, which also means a couple of uh, smaller weapons can go and instead we're just taking that and that and we should be fine you never know how much healing you will need So this here could be helpful and this here could be helpful. Good, Dilly, this already have fantastic, um, fantastic equipment. Let's take the shotgun. And we're good to go. Same ordeal here. More ammunition just in case we need it. That unfortunately cannot be used. Um, but in case we really, really need uh, some extra, some extra healing, we'll get more ammunition with us. That is helpful as well. In terms of shredding, he does not have a real good option for shredding and one of the best options for shredding is the shredding shotgun of the Anu. That's actually quite helpful, complements his uh, kit very well. Inappropriate Murphy, uh, we already got that, a bit extra healing is okay, and Grell, look, some of that, some of that, and I think we're okay, is he a Scyther? Yeah. Extra hit points, extra hit points. Extra hit points. Extra hit points and we're good. Deploying the squad. Time to land. Take the ejector. Kill the gatekeepers. Okay. Big fat crap here. 9,000 hit points. Well, that's what you would expect from the final boss. A little bit of this. And a little bit of that. And in order to make sure that everybody is quick, friends the inappropriate Murphy. Just 
Shattered Realm takes the injector. Continues to move a bit closer. Euler follows him. Oh, okay. Well, we got some company. Okay, a lot of company, not some. Two Skrillas just as a warm up. Okay. I can see where this is going. By the way, in terms of level design, don't want to sound too negative always, but this here is some really poor uh, level design just so that you need to run around. Anyways, it is what it is. I don't want to uh, sound too harsh with the game. But there are some glaring design weaknesses. Good, Shadow Realm gets the Onslaught. Uh, let's... Let's move over to here. Enemies, meanwhile, are alerted to us. One. Kill. Moves over. Good. Uh, we want to get rid of uh, most of them. Quantity over quality. We discussed that often enough. It's not a good. That's um, not a good idea. everyone there <laughs> enemies now start to panic Two. 
Three, four. Skrilla is completely panicked. Which is funny if you think about it, because uh, now they are susceptible to mind control. Maybe that is something that we're going to do. Drinks moves up. Hands over actions. Remember how I said we need some way to just shred the guy? That is exactly how we're doing it. Charging in. The Skrillas are already completely taken out. End of turn. Okay, well, here we go. One and two. Should have run. Begins to hit this guy really, really, really hard. Handing over more actions, which will result in more hits, more bleeding, more damage. He is already almost down. Skrill moves up. One, two, we're moving to here. Minus ten will. But he's still not quite uh, not completely down uh, Dash over here Single move into cover And most of the team just tries to move up Drinks dashes and dashes again. Uh, 
Um, how about... Dashing up. Take two of uh, his... Uh, take two of uh, his action. Yeah, we, we can go in next turn. No point in... Going too uh, too hard on this guy. JP moves up. Can we mind control him? The answer is yes. If we spawn a mine fragger, is that one of ours? Yay! We got a mine fragger. It seems like we need to kill everyone before progressing. Not sure if mind control really is going to work. But we got a little mind fragger out of it. Not bad. Fragger moves a bit to the side. Good, we're regaining. We're regaining our um, points. Yeah, not needed here. Spider drone moves up. Spider drone detonates. up with dash that's one two three moves up with dash okay Drinks moves up. Potentially needs to reload. Couple of drones move up. Well, maybe that is the last enemy, who knows? Did 
Did the G move up? We haven't even started to place turrets or anything. It's literally standing here. Killing everything in one go. Cool. Let's take one of the fastest units and make it even faster. Roots, heavy carapace. Well, carapace seems like it would be protecting something. Ola just moves up. We get need to be, uh, get a little bit closer so far. All of this appears to be very theoretical. Ugothian Resactyl. Okay, well, we can't do that. I don't think that uh, this is going to be a big problem. Shouldn't be. Can move up to here. fully understand is why if they've made the map so large and there is really nothing that you are battling Ranks moves up as well. Haven't even found a single enemy here. I think the like pre-room was supposed to be ultra hard. Twenty-two damage. Okay, yeah. So Dilly moves up here.
mainly in the hopes of getting a good overwatch. I don't know the mechanics of the fight, so I don't want to just rush in. It appears to me from what I'm seeing that the guy is just dealing some sort of non-resistible damage. If that's the case, okay. Then we're just going to counter heal. Okay, we're moving up. I mean, look. Sooner or later, we will need to engage, right? And I don't think that this uh, this uh, thing will withstand multiple rounds of compressed fire. Everybody runs up. Spider drones move. And we're done. Mark of the Void, what exactly does that do? Okay, so enemies are spawning left and right. Fair enough. And now it deals 40 points of damage. I see, so it's increasing, which means we gotta deal with whatever is happening really fast. Unless we want to die a horrible death. Good, so rapid clearance, yes please. Moves up, kills the guy. Continues to move up. Kills another one. Ola moves up. Give Ian more actions. 
Ian finishes this guy. Okay, cool. Ian jumps up here. And I'm wondering, can we get through that? Or is the idea essentially that it's completely walled off. Hmm. Grell will unload next turn. Okay, so since that's not even taking damage, and we will likely need to surround it. We will likely need to surround it. Okay, cool. Um, we got enough action points to start annoying it. Prophet Murphy moves up and puts that one up here. can I'm sure slash from here next turn Drangs moves over here still have maximum willpower might as well use boom blast which should hopefully shred some of the armor all right end of turn Let's start with Adrenaline Rush. Very 
good. It's an interesting design decision that uh, the creators of the game felt that it was necessary to hide the main boss behind um, an indestructible shield because elsewise it would die too fast. It tells you a lot about uh, their perception of balance. Okay, that seems to work, which means we are going to abuse it. Luckily, everybody can go into either of the turrets. It's a very unique design. To essentially force you to shoot uh, through this. And then his void thing doesn't even trigger doesn't even trigger uh, reaction shots. Yeah, just make four out of five shots uh, effectively useless. That's great design of a boss. You can't attack it during uh, during your turn. You must go one opening good heals up and We don't have any, no, we don't have any more ammunition. Well, that's fine. Next turn is going to be um, unloading onto it. has cleverly left one open. Wow. 
water mechanic. Alright, spider drones are useless against it. Now here we go. Wait a second, it still has some armor. And that's not good. Heavy carapace. Oh, well, that's the head. And the roots, okay. Well, I have to wonder. It's now loaded with 29 acid. That may or may not uh, reduce reduce its armor going forward. Okay. Um. Let's continue with our turret. As it seems to be one of the very few things that regularly hits. In fact, uh, the drones are actually quite good if there isn't a hole in the ground which you can't move over. I don't want to sound too negative, but uh, this boss is actually a disappointing finale. It feels uh, that uh, the designers have run out of time and hastily put something in and if your answer to too much damage is let's put three layers of carapace in between you and the enemy then that is not a good design. Good ranks. What are we going to do? Heading over an action, of course. And we don't need to heal yet. But three 
300 damage definitely is worthwhile. Lots of tenta uh, tentacles are down. And we're racking up more and more acid. Of course, melee weapons, no, no. It becomes mildly immune against acid, apparently. Shattered Realm moves up. More damage. It is very obvious what you need to do. Just go onto both sides. Or go onto all four angles and make sure that you can hit it. Recover. Recover. Oila begins to go to the other side. In the meantime, overwatches. Rel is back for an adrenaline rush. Good, that of course does not hit. Unfortunately, it's impossible to go past that barrier. We're recovering and okay. Extra squeezy kill. Unfortunately, can't hit from there. Luckily, the other turret can hit. Five hundred, five hundred. Continuing to remote control sec.
Good, almost done. Interestingly enough, it's also completely unbothered by virus infections or something along those lines. It has zero will points, but it still continues to just con continue to exist. Delays the hate on this uh, thing. Should have potentially marked it for death beforehand. Now we're just going to town with our PDW. Good. Moves up. Yes. We had no choice. None of the factions had a viable plan. There was no other way to save the planet. And sometimes the ends had to justify the means. That's what we told ourselves anyway. Within minutes, the Pandora virus began to die. And its creatures soon followed. They died by the millions. And soon the rest of us were dying too. Not everyone. Not enough to wipe us out. But too many. The disciples of Anu collapsed first. The exalted died within 24 hours of the virophage being released. And without its prophet, the religion fell apart. The future it had promised was impossible now. Sanhedrin tried to fight, to develop a vaccine. And if they'd had more time, they might have succeeded. But they'd lost too many people to maintain their communities. Slowly, they faded out of existence. New Jericho had wanted a world without the Pandora virus, but this was not how they had imagined it. Within a few months, their havens had become ghost towns. Tobias West was one of the few to survive, having lived long enough to see his empire reduced to dust. In the end, despite our losses, we were the only ones left capable of guiding the survivors. We seized control. Humanity could no longer afford to divide itself into factions. And so the Phoenix Project began to build a new world. But although our responsibilities had widened, we did not forget our initial purpose. The war was not over. Up there in celestial darkness, something ancient and powerful still hungered for our planet. But next time, next time, we'd be ready. Okay, I think that is it. That was Phoenix Point blind playthrough of Legend Difficulty. Let's see if there are some epilogues and then I'll give a few thoughts around it. I am still contemplating whether or not uh, to do a video that uh, gives a review on Phoenix Point. So, 93 surviving havens. Uh, 19, uh, almost 19 bases. Uh, not sure where the exploration sites hidden where. Apparently a couple of colonies existed. Killed quite a few. 
interestingly enough, most of the kills, uh, non Pandoran kills, were with the ancients. 53 re um, are recruited. We lost one and had quite a few level seven. Battles fought, 130 missions and 53 missions. Yeah, that sounds about right. And, uh, 200 missions all in all. Oh yeah, so I mean, listen, if I had to uh, talk to Phoenix Point, it potentially would fill a longer video, but the short and sweet uh, after playing through it. Let's start with uh, the uh, positive. I think the game has a lot of potential. The hit zone system, uh, system is great. The general tactical uh, layer is good with the way that action uh, that actions work uh, i would even say it's a bit more complex to have four actions and then like go uh, alongside that but it is closer to the original ufo and it it is well done hit bars hit mechanics with the a very few exceptions always uh, were on point and uh, worked so that is good just flow of missions and uh, and uh, difficulty okay I was surprised uh, that the hardest difficulty actually was very moderate uh, very moderately challenging I think good graphics good general idea of um, of what the game is trying to do there's a bit of an however to it as well and I would potentially phrase my main criticisms into three to four uh, main arguments. Main argument number one, completely convoluted uh, and I, part of that is the whole DLC add-on to add-on to add-on. It feels like a fully modded game with hundreds of things happening at the same time. None of that is really coherent and it really doesn't feel like any of your decisions are super meaningful meaning if you ally with one faction you can still ally with another one they are different and, and feel different but it's not really from a content perspective a straight stringent line i was following five nar narration paths at the same time the super secret armor the uh, mm, uh, pure uh, faction then the mutation, then the main storyline, then three faction storylines, yada, yada, yada. It was just way too much uh, on parallel to to make for a coherent, uh, sensible game. So it's criticism number one, completely convoluted. Criticism number two, the overall balancing of the game is completely off. I, I'm seldomly saying that, but it is absolute garbage. Um, I have no idea how this after more than a year is still going to be released like this. There are clearly better abilities than others and one of the issues is the design decision of a horizon uh, of a vertical instead of a horizontal uh, progression system i.e. you fan out into breadth instead of getting concrete real upgrades that with the combination of some of these uh, these vertical side grades, not actually being side grades, but being massively better than anything else, um, makes the game completely imbalanced. If I was to field a squad of, let's say, a vehicle plus um, a few characters that just happen to work with virus weapons in general, as opposed to let's say the prime team that you have seen which is nigh immune to most of the um, most of the stuff and has reset mechanics uh, beyond reset mechanics beyond reset mechanics it is absolutely clear to me what the better choices there are complete outlier abilities like war cry um, like the reset mechanic um, that that invalidate other options um, and make them nigh unplayable so yes 
in other games like XCOM 2, there are also worse options, but everything is serviceable. Whilst in here, some of the things are simply too bad. So the balancing is, is completely off. So convoluted, bad balancing, and then just the wrong approach to complexity. It's hard to describe, but um, com typically co uh, complexity is being used as a mechanism in order to in introduce difficulty. And whilst that is generally okay and, and, and a sound concept, you need to think about what type of uh, complexity, because just putting in more options means uh, it's not, it doesn't achieve the goal of it becoming more difficult. It just becomes convoluted and people will take shortcuts uh, and just focus on, on the relevant topics. Let me give a one good example of uh, that. XCOM 2 uses a very uh, complex system of action economy. You can, it's uh, easy to get used to it, but it is very, very difficult to master. If you layer a lot of uh, the abilities like Death From Above, plus um, teamwork abilities, when to reload, um, how to move, um, free movement uh, abilities like, um, like Implacable that only trigger once. If you take all of that into account, the skill ceiling of someone playing that game is surprisingly high because the complexity comes from the interaction of the different abilities with one another. Now this game tried to emulate something like that with just having multiple base classes and then uh, letting, uh, letting uh, the uh, classes interact uh, with one another, but it completely, in my perspective, failed it by just putting too much content into the game having hundreds and hundreds of uh, side, uh, side grades and then um, kind of suggesting that you can play the game in 15 different variants. And whilst that is correct, you can play it in 15 variants, there are like two or three um, options that are just far better than everything else. Uh, the reset uh, mechanic, the paralysis mechanic, the fire mechanic is way better than any um, option around poison, viruses or um, virophage weapons which are again very niche weapons so criticism number three is complexity here is tried to be a, a difficult is tried to be achieved by needless complexity instead of um, good and sound interactions of abilities um, with one another and then there is kind of the last point that gets an extra minus at, at this game which is just the detail micromanagement. I have at least said it a hundred times, trading is a completely shite mechanic. I don't know who came up with that idea of not automating it, but you have the same topic, mini uh, micromanagement of inventories for up to a hundred soldiers that I was, uh, that I was uh, running, micromanagement of all bases, micromanagement of uh, the um, the ammunition that you have or do not have. And look, I appreciate it if, um, if you do have options like that, but you need to find a moderate uh, amount uh, where uh, you need to find fine tune the, the, it to an amount where it doesn't get overbearing. And if quality of gameplay gets reduced by doing stupid stuff over and over, and you justify that by, you know what, this is what quote unquote skill in this game looks like. I don't think that that is a very clever design principle. The amount of just flying around and trading uh, was, was painful. Um, having seven or eight squads at the end was uh, not, like in, uh, not like in XCOM where you do have two or three squads. It was just immensely badly designed and there was no incentive of having eight squads. You wanted to have Helios's to fly around as fast as possible. You wanted your prime team to get all of the points because the zone, th that team is the only team that is going into the final mission. And uh, by just stacking all of the power, the, the final mission was a joke. Um, so my main suggestion around that would be to really focus on automating some of the subsystems, get rid of some of the complexity, 
not having ammunition like in XCOM 2 is totally fine. Let's just ignore the ammunition. Say every weapon automatically has uh, two uh, magazines and that's it. Like afterwards the ammunition is over if you want to run out of ammunition during the fights. If that is something that you truly think is a good design principle. So anyways, I don't want to talk myself into, into a rage. There were a couple of positives. I enjoyed the game, the game pacing, length, uh, needless conv convolution, uh, micromanagement, uh, wrong difficulty through complexity, and the design decision of vertical uh, uh, of vertical uh, of vertical progress combined with poor balancing has left a sour taste. Would I revisit uh, Phoenix Point if you guys are truly enjoying it? Listen, I could see myself playing a shorter, um, small campaign, maybe with a clear focus, maybe with a, uh, a mod or uh, two. Uh, the game itself is good. Uh, it has a robust framework, but you really need to um, uh, you really need to focus on something that you want to do and then set a, a target, not the 200 missions um, bullshit that we were uh, doing. That's just far too long. So. A small playthrough, something maybe along the lines of we're, we LA with one faction, or we take uh, mm, uh, we maybe take the um, one DLC and focus on that cha chaos engines, for instance, with like the crazy new um, customizable buggies and uh, do a little bit of cha chaos fun. That could be something, or uh, we, we focus on one particular playstyle or very limited set of classes some something along those lines to uh to make it fun because elsewise look i played it for the very first time there was no behind the scenes uh, shenanigans and we had like two or three closer missions but other than that we, we lost uh, over 140 missions we lost one uh, one soldier that is not really difficult but that's a different story uh, a story for a different day I thank you for watching. Leave a comment down below and let me know how you uh, think Phoenix Point has performed. What was your impression of the run? What did you like? What did you dislike? I would like to hear your opinion about it and see you in the next game. Take care. Bye bye.